All right, so now we're going to move on to our fourth and final step in building our upper receiver. Now this is going to be a multi-part step. We're going to install our handguard. We're also going to put on our muzzle device and install our bolt carrier group and charging handle. Now as far as parts, you're going to need your obviously your handguard and any mounting hardware that goes with that, your muzzle device and a crush washer. A peel washer can also be used. I prefer crush washers. That's typically the standard that you're going to see for installing your muzzle device. You're also going to need your bolt carrier group, your charging handle, and your almost completed upper receiver assembly. Now as far as tools, there should only be two tools that you need. You're going to need whatever tool that you'll use to install your handguard. In this case, we're going to use an inch-pound torque screwdriver. And then you'll need something to install your barrel device, which can either be an armor's wrench or an adjustable wrench like this one here. Now there's a couple considerations you want to make when moving on to this step. The size of your muzzle device is going to dictate whether you put it or the handguard on first. Since this is a lower profile one, we can install our handguard first. If this were fatter or like a cookie cutter style from Strike Industries, something like that, you're going to want to install that after your handguard. So we'll go ahead and install our handguard. We're just going to slide that right over. And we're going to make sure everything mates up here. Now with a lot of handguards on a forged style receiver, you're going to see the little tabs or something to line everything up. And basically you want to make sure that your the top up here, the rail sections line up, and these tabs go over your upper receiver. And then we're going to go ahead and install our screws. Now this one uses two Allen head screws. Now with these screws, it can be a good idea to go ahead and put a little bit of blue Loctite. We're not going to do that today because we're doing this for demonstration, but that is a good step to do here. So now when moving on to the mounting hardware and installing, you want to pay attention to manufacturer's instructions. With this particular handguard from Dirty Bird Industries, they specify 30 to 40 inch pounds of torque on this screw. So that's what we have our torque screwdriver set to. Now that click tells us we've gotten to the proper inch-pounds of torque, so we're going to move on to the next one. Alright, and that is our handguard installed. Next we're going to go ahead and move on to our muzzle device. And one thing you want to note about your crush washer when you're installing this, you'll notice that there are two sides of this crush washer. There's going to be a thinner side and then there's going to be a cupped side kind of like this is shaped like a bowl now the inside of the bowl here you want that to go towards the outside of your barrel so we're going to install that just like this now when installing your muzzle device it's a good idea to put a little bit of aeroshell grease on this part as well Now we're going to go ahead and proceed to thread that on. Now, different muzzle devices, you're going to want to pay attention to how this is timed as well, just like we talked about timing with the barrel nut. Now with these A2 flash hiders, these are pretty simple because there's going to be five grooves along the top here, and you're just going to line those up so that the center groove is right in line with the top of your handguard here. And this is where you're going to employ your adjustable wrench to go ahead and put that into place. Now once you've got this installed, this isn't the final one we're going to do for this build, so we're going to avoid tightening that on this one. Now once you've got this all installed to the specs that are required by your muzzle device, you're going to move on to your bolt carrier group and charging handle. Alright, now as far as installing your bolt carrier group and charging handle, that's pretty simple. On the side of your charging handle, you're going to notice these little tabs here, and those are going to mate with an opening in the top of your upper receiver. 
And you'll notice once it gets into that groove, it, it'll slide freely up here in the top section. And now that we've got our charging handle in place, we're going to go ahead and flip over our upper. Now that we've got everything turned upside down, we're going to go ahead and install this so that your gas key on your bolt carrier group is facing forward toward the gas tube. So we're going to install everything upside down. Now one thing you want to make sure of is when you're putting your bolt carrier group in, you want to make sure that your bolt is pulled all the way out, like so. So the pin that's holding this in place should be all the way in the forward position as well, and your bolt should be as far forward as it can go. Next we're going to flip our bolt carrier group upside down and rest our gas key into the groove into the underside of your charging handle. Then everything will just slide right into place there, and then click into place. And then you'll notice your dust cover comes out. So we'll reinstall that. And now we have a fully assembled upper receiver. Now as far as functioning of the rifle, this is a complete upper receiver. This is going to be the point where you're going to make choices about what kind of sights you want to have on top, whether you want to go with just a set of iron sights, or if you want to install a red dot optic, something like this, or a scope. Really the sky's the limit. With standard Picatinny rails, you can install a variety of different kinds of sights. And that would be really the only thing you have left to do before you go ahead and install this into your completed lower receiver.